it's no good. I can't live in these garages any longer. I'm going to have to bite the bullet and rent. There's really not much choice in a reasonable price range in St Albans. So I think we're just going to go one bedroom house share. There you go. This is the glory life of being a manager of a conference south club. £390 a month. Long term. At least the letting agent has confidence in my management ability. Hello and welcome to part 8 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have an away game against Halifax. Conference side Halifax in the third round of the FA Trophy. Plus an away game in the league against top of the table Weldstone. Since you last been with me, we've only played a couple of games and they didn't exactly go to plan. Western Supermare at home, that was a fan day and we tried to be fancy and attack and it just all went a little bit wrong and we were rubbish. So we lost that one. And then in the second game against Hungerford, we were doing all right, but then got Wyatt sent off and struggled a little bit. Got a late equaliser through Tom Bender. <laughs> he says late. 63 minutes on the clock. We shut up shop. That's how late we decided it was and managed to grab a draw out of that game. So the league table looks like this with another 12 games left to go. We're still only five points away from top of the table. Worldstone. If we have a good result in the second match today, we've got an opportunity. And um, there has been a little bit of further transfer news, I think. I'm sure we released someone else. We didn't release anybody. We put Snedka on the transfer list because he's the next in the long line of players who've had enough. Um, he's on the transfer list at his own request. And actually, there's clubs that want him. And interestingly, one of the clubs that want him are in League Two. So perhaps perhaps we should have given him a go at some point, but it's too late now. We've burnt that bridge. He's in a grumpy with us. He's done. And the story of the first part of this, ep this episode is going to be the return of a non-league to legend veteran. Not in our team, but in the Halifax team, because Halifax have up front for them start of the first very first season of the first non-league to legend many years ago Dale Southwell who scored he was top scorer in the conference north for my Boston side at the time and then refused to sign a new contract when we got promoted and we had to go without him he's been on my enemies list ever since today is the day we get revenge although Halifax are a mid-table National League side so I don't rate our chances of doing particularly well against them although remember the last time we faced a team who were 10th in the National League it was Ebbsfleet and it was a stonker so fingers crossed we can keep our FA Trophy run going because the combination of that and the little FA Cup run we had means our bank balance despite being overspending on our wage budget by about £500 a week still our bank balance is ever increasing. We're up to nearly £300,000 in the bank now, which when we started the season, um, I think we started there on about 60000 We've made a £200,000 profit so far this season. That'll do. So this is the team for the Halifax game. We've got McDonough in goal, a back four of Bender, Mills, Morgan and Hurd, with Wilkin, Noble, Sambu and Hopkins in midfield, and then Merson and Spruce up front. This team pretty much picks itself. Now, obviously, if Wyatt's in, um, we, pro we either stick him on the left-hand side of midfield or we take Morgan out of the side and shuffle the defence around a little bit. But other than that, this is, a very, this is very much a set team now. We know who our best players are. Um, and we're going to tell the lads just to go out there and have fun. It's another test against opposition from the league above, who must be in relatively poor form, because I'm sure when we looked at them when the draw was first made, they were fifth in the National League. So for them to have dropped down to 10th suggests they've had a ropey couple of games as well, but they have just scored with pretty much the first kick of the game, four minutes on the clock, um, but it's the first attack. And I smell an offside here. I think they've just, they've just done us with a well-practiced set piece there. Because they had three players. Well, I mean, I would argue... He, I know the guy who scored it isn't offside, but there was three of them between our goalkeeper and our defenders. He can't be expected to follow just one of them. I say he's interfering with play there and that goal should have been disallowed. But, you know, it gives us... Gives us something to work towards. We've given away an early goal in a big game yet again because it seems to be just... It's the way we do these big games. We give away an early goal. We like to motivate ourselves. Sambu, our captain on the edge of the area, finds Hopkins. Hopkins crosses towards absolutely nobody. I don't really know what he was attempting there. And now Halifax have the chance to break again and it's played towards Southwell and Southwell scores. It's been disallowed though. Good. I can't have Dale Southwell scoring against me. In the last episode, we had all of our Nuneaton old boys. We ruined their day. 
We want to ruin Dale Southwell's day here as well because I actually liked most of those Nuneaton lads. Dale Southwell, top of the enemies list. So we can't have him being able to lord it over us for the rest of time. The only option if Halifax win today is we're going to have to sign Southwell and stick him in the under-18s or something. Or, you know, probably play him and have him score 30 goals a season, as we know he's capable of. Um, but Halifax come at us again. Southwell's in again. McDonough makes the save. McDonough is, I mean, he's just got to keep doing that. Just keep Southwell out. That is our only goal. Forget about trying to win the match. We've already gone further than we ever could have hoped for. Just don't let this man score. But they're coming at us again. We've, um, we, we're struggling to get into this game. But there you go. We're closing Dale Southwell down, and that's that's what it's that's the sub game. We've got a meta game going on as inside the game itself, and they're a ball over the top again. Southwell's in again. McDonough makes the save again. A better manager than me would be dropping the defensive line at this point because clearly their tactic is ball over the top. Southwell running behind. I wonder, do I drop the defensive line or do I stick an offside trap on? We've we've got to fiddle with that in some way in this second half because. He has beaten our, beaten our defensive line repeatedly and we're struggling a little bit with the the whole offside thing. So we have been unlucky so far. I think on another day, their goal's disallowed. Right, what can we do about this defensive line? We've already got quite a low defensive line. So maybe we're going to stick an off tra offside trap on. How do we stick an offside trap on these days? There must be a way to stick an offside trap on. Ah, there we go. Use offside trap. Right. Kev doing tactics mid-game. You never thought you'd see that on this channel, did you? I could, it's all well and good moving the players around the way I do sometimes and changing the shape of the team. I've just identified an error with the way we're playing and attempted to correct it. Admittedly, I don't know if we're smart enough to play an offside trap, but our defence is our big strength. Our best players are all defenders. So I'd like to think... If we're going to ever have an opportunity to do something fancy, these four players should be able to rustle up a bit of an offside trap between them. The The conundrum now is at what point do we try and attack and get back into this game or do we just keep counter-attacking and hoping an opportunity presents itself? Moyo's going to come on and we're also going to take off David Noble as well. Oh, we did sign a player. I knew, we, I knew there was transfers happening. Jordan Edwards is a 19-year-old central midfielder who's in for the rest of the season with a view to being the long-term David Noble. Um, he's come on loan from Swindon for the season and I like the look of him. Well, this, is a, this is his debut. So... You know, no pressure or anything, lad, but come on there and turn the game for us. Um, right, let's... Let, I don't know, should we show some passion? It's the FA Trophy. It's the big one. It's the competition. Kids grow up dreaming of winning. The FA Trophy. Southwell running at us again. He seems to be playing deeper than he was before. I'm not sure which number he is, so I don't know if he's actually moved out onto the wing. Moyo's in, though, and it's straight at their keeper. But that was a, that was a big chance for Moyo. Probably should have done a little bit better. And Southwell has moved out onto the right wing for Halifax now. And I think with 10 minutes to go, we are going to have to... We're going to have to try and win the game, aren't we? Um, who have we got to come on? Cambio can come on. Percy can come on. Neither of them are particularly going to come on and change the game, I don't think. I think what I'm actually going to do is bring on Percy for Hurd, just purely because Hurd's on a yellow card and tiring. We're going to go more positive, and we're just going to we're going to try and win the game. Let's get the ball forward. There you go. Push forward. In fact, we're not even going to try and win the game. We're going to try and score a goal. This is where it all went wrong in the fan day that we had. We just can't attack very well. Merson shoots over from the edge of the area. I mean, we've not looked outclassed against the team who are in the top half of the division above, but also we've not really looked like scoring. Merson with the corner. Edwards is free. That was his big opportunity to make an impression on his debut. A completely free header, and he kind of wasted it, but it falls to Edwards again, plays it out to Wilkin. We're not going to get many more opportunities to grab an equaliser. Wilkin plays it in, but it doesn't make it anywhere near Moyo. And now Halifax have the opportunity to counter-attack. It's with Mills back to McDonough. And we go again through Edwards again. Plays it out towards Hopkins. This is a different style of attack to what we do when Noble's there. Noble always looks for the ball over the top. Edwards seems to be keener to play it out towards the wingers and let them do the business. And we've conceded our second goal. You know, we weren't supposed to win it. We haven't won it. Hopefully we've picked up a little bit a little bit more cash to help with the coffers from having a fairly deep run in this competition and I guess at least we can focus on the league now and see if we can we've got to decide whether we want to finish in the playoffs or not. Obviously we're going to try and win every game, but 
finishing in the playoff sounds a little bit scary because we're absolutely not ready for the step up. Although that being said, like I said before, we've we've not been outclassed today against one of the better teams in the division above. So perhaps we are ready for the step up. Perhaps we need to believe in ourselves a little bit more. Edwards, again, trying to find a winger rather than a striker, doesn't really get there. He's not had the best of debuts, but then he is playing at a higher level than he'll have to play at any point for the rest of the season. Now, let's calmly say, um, yeah, it just wasn't to be. I mean, they were a better team and they showed it. And now we have to go and play against another team who theoretically are better because they're top of the league. But if we beat them, and it's a big if, we could go set, we could go just two points behind them and insert ourselves into a title race. Just the one change for the Worldstone game. Wyatt is back from his suspension, so comes back in at left back. And we do the usual thing. Morgan drops down to the bench. The rest of the defence shuffle across a little bit and everyone else stays as they are. That, 11, that is my first choice team. And that is absolutely the team that I want to be taking out there for a top of the table clash. Although, Worldstone actually aren't top of the table anymore. Um, recent form stand at Worldstone have won four of the five last... It's, if we perform... Yeah. Oh, Gordon Bennett... Um, yeah, it's time to start improving. There you go. I don't know. Um, where's the league table gone? Um, league table. Wellstone no longer top. Woking back at the top of the league, but it is still a five-point gap between us and Wellstone. So we can we can force ourselves back into the upper echelons of the playoff picture. But with a win today, we'll be up level with the likes of. Torquay and Oxford, although we've got a worse goal difference than both of them. Things are actually getting pretty tight in this playoff race. I can see why they let the playoffs run all the way down to the seventh position now. It keeps things interesting, for, even for the likes of Gloucester, who down in 10th place, with, what, 10 games left to go in the season, are still absolutely in with a chance of getting promoted. So this playoff structure works. I should never have criticised it. Um, but we just had our first half decent chance of the game, but it is straight at the keeper from Spruce. Um, Spruce has kind of gone off the boil just a little bit in the last couple of games. He had that absolute purple patch when he first burst into the team at the expense of Moyo, but I think as it's become clear, I'm not a big Moyo fan. He's not been training very well. His training reports, he's getting like fours and fives in training every week, and there's just no way I'm starting a player who's only getting fours and fives as a training rating. So... Moyo is, um, he's never getting back in the team unless he sorts his head out. So Spruce is a little bit more comfortable and not playing quite so well, it seems. That was a cracking goal, by the way. Can I point out, this is non-league. 20th goal of the season for Rico Hackett Fairchild. There are some high-scoring players in this division. And I think our big our big worry is that we don't have one. Our top, our top scorer probably this season isn't likely to be above 15 goals. And I think that's probably what we need to correct over the summer. We need a player who's going to get out there and get 20, 25, 30 goals over the course of a season because most other teams seem to have one. Wilkin now on the left-hand side. Cross comes over towards Spruce and Spruce scores. Perhaps he's the man. Perhaps we keep him for another year. That's his ninth of the season now. Perhaps he's... I mean, how many games has he played? 15, maybe? 15, 16 games? He's not scoring at the worst rate in the world, and that was a tidy little finish and puts us right back into the game. Lovely header, looping over the top of the goalkeeper. And it's game on, boys and girls, as we move towards half-time. That puts us back up into seventh place. We don't want to be falling out of the playoffs at this stage of the season, but we do need to keep reminding ourselves we're not supposed to be in the playoff hunt anyway. Um, we're supposed to be a mid-table team. The board are looking for mid-table. The pre-season media prediction was an 18th place finish. Even if we end up finishing 10th or 11th now, we've overachieved on the media prediction and the board will be well happy. So I've got to try and keep it into perspective when we're getting stressed out about whether or not we're going to... Oh, are we going to stay in the playoffs? Who cares? If we get promoted now, we'll be ruined next year anyway. But We'll worry about that. I mean, that'd be a nice problem to have if we get to that point. Um, but Worldstone coming at us again. Tell me that's not the Hudson O'Doy playing for playing for Worldstone because that's hideous. If it is, I need to check on that because <laughs> if that's the lad from Chelsea, like the good one, the one I've heard of, the one in my Chelsea save, that's not fair. That's cheating. Spruce brought down in the penalty area. I think if we've got a penalty, we have Ben Hurd steps up. Ben Hurd hopefully can tuck it away. He's, uh, he's scored every penalty he's taken so far this season. And he scores another one. 2-1 to St Albans. 70 minutes on the clock. Sixth goal of the season for Hurd. 
I still haven't given him a new contract for next year because he's 33. But I guess what we've learned with David Noble this year is that at this level, that doesn't matter so much. No, it's a B Hudson O'Doy. I guess Brad Bradley must be must be Callum's brother, surely. You'll let me know down in the comments, I'm sure. I don't want to click on him because we all know if I click on him, it guarantees he's going to score because that's how football manager works. But I assume, I assume that's his brother. And I get, I'm, I'm hoping he isn't as good. Right, we're bringing Banton on on the right wing and we're also going to bring Edwards on in midfield. Actually, are we? Neither of them really. We can bring Camjo on actually rather than Edwards because Camjo can come on and actually be the ball-winning midfielder that we want alongside Noble. Noble, we're going to give him another five minutes. Five more minutes, then Noble swaps over for Edwards because Noble's having a good game and his fitness levels have been remarkable this season. He's captain at the moment as well. Bless his cotton socks. But we will take him off now. Give Edwards another 15 minutes so we can have a little look at Edwards again. See if he can perform a little bit better against a slightly lesser opposition than what he faced in the last game. Um, but that is a lovely pass over the top. And what a tackle. Who is that with the tackle? Was that Bender comes across with a fantastic block? To deny them, I don't even know if that's registered as a shot, um, but from the resulting corner, they've scored anyway. So, who cares about the block? Came eh? out, well just let them score in the first place. Unnecessary exertion of effort. If that was Tom Bender, he's just saying, you know, what's the point now? I try my hardest, and then you let them score from the corner. Why well, ask you? Why are we getting a. This can't be a suspicion of offside from a corner, surely. I'd, have you ever seen an offside given in that situation for a corner? I've seen them from the short corners where footballers just don't understand how offside works. But just, a, oh, that's hideous. We don't deserve that. And that pushes us back out of the playoffs again. That's awful. We need to, I mean, what's even happened here? They've. I mean, it's just a simple non-league goal, isn't it? Cross comes in, header, scores powerless to stop it and i guess we're just gonna have to take our medicine we've got to scroll to find us now down to 10th place i was just talking about 10th place as well it's a good job 10th for still in with a chance at the playoffs because otherwise our season would be over oh how many games left 10 ish i think let's have a look at the league table before we close things off today um i can't fault them they tried their best against a better team away from home it's just a shame it didn't come off for us. And I think we've hit a rough run of form in the league at the worst possible time. So there's 11 games left. We're still only two points outside of the playoffs. We're not going to win the league now. We were never going to win it anyway. We could still sneak into the playoffs. And I still think that would be a useful experience as long as we don't win them. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.